So, we are still here at Embedded World and we are at the GitHub stand and we are here talking to someone with a robotic gopher. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Dead Program. I am a software developer and engineer and I'm one of the people involved with the Tiny Go project. This is GopherBot. <laughs> this is the official mascot of our project. So, the Go programming language is the language that won the war for cloud computing. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all of the software that runs the infrastructure of the internet these days is written in Go. Mm -hmm. So the Tiny Go project is to bring that same level of software quality down to the microcontroller. So GopherBot here is just a toy made with Tiny Go as an example of the sorts of things that you could do. Mm -hmm. When we first started the project, some people said to us, that's just a toy language. Mm. Well, I think they were trying to insult us. <laughs> but we decided we would take it literally, and so we decided to make a toy out of it. <laughs> That's a great idea, yeah. <laughs> At the same time, it's actually demonstrating some of the more powerful capabilities of TinyGo, mm -hmm. and Go in general, which is its concurrency. Yeah. The ability to do more than one thing mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. So with GopherBot, we actually have three different Go routines. Mm -hmm. One is controlling the backpack. <laughs> okay. One is controlling the antenna on a spring, mm -hmm. the s springy antenna. Mm -hmm. I gave that to open source, probably should have patented it. <laughs> and then one is controlling the visor. So it seems like it's a trivial example, and it sort of is, but it demonstrates the fact that with the Go programming language, mm -hmm. it's quite easy to create concurrent software. And that is one of the really important things you need, especially with embedded and IoT applications, mm -hmm. where you need to be able to read sensors and also report to your cloud, or maybe store it to local storage on the device until it's able to reconnect to your cloud. So these are some of the table stakes of a serious industrial application, all in the form of a cute robotic plushie. And that's perfect to hear, that really is. And the thing, the thing I love about this too is that uh, Go is a language I'm quite fond of as well. Um, oh, and uh, one of the things that made me very happy in the early days of, say, MicroPython, as an example, um, more recently, I suppose, you could talk maybe Rust. I know Rust is a very different language. But if someone was, say, a beginner to intermediate programmer in Go, they maybe learned to, done a course on it, they maybe learned a little bit of it, how easily would they be able to take on embedded Go or tiny Go, as it is called? Well, you know, that is a really key thing that we've spent a lot of our time and focus on, is to make it relatively straightforward, not just for Go programmers, but for programmers of any language. Maybe it's the first time you've ever used Go and you're learning to use an embedded device. Ultimately, Tiny Go is just Go. It's the same language. It may have some different libraries that you need to bring in for special capabilities for certain devices, but we really wanted to, we really admire MicroPython and CircuitPython for the accessibility part. Yeah. The part that makes it straightforward for a person with a logical mind, or maybe an artistic mind, to be able to take and make a device do something interesting, that's something that maybe it just pleases them. Or maybe it's something idea. useful. Yeah, that's, I mean, that is a really wonderful thing, and I think it's something that really is appealing to a lot of people right now, especially who are maybe getting into the makersphere from other angles and are learning coding as they go. Um, if, say, for example, someone wanted to get into Tiny Go now, is there any kind of easy uh, uh, hardware compatibility? Might they be able to get a simple board that works? And also, where do they go? Is there a Tiny Go website? Uh, all that kind of stuff. So, there is a Tiny Go website, mm -hmm. tinygo.org. And uh, we actually have support for 78 different boards at present. A lot of the common maker boards from the great companies like Adafruit and Arduino. Also, you know, some industrial boards, yep. some special purpose boards. You know, so the idea is that whatever hardware you have lying around, a lot of people have 8-bit original Arduino Unos. Mm. Now, it doesn't have a lot of capabilities, but you can write a Tiny Go program that does something on it. Mm. And the idea here is, you know, we're very concerned with the new and the latest and the greatest of hardware. Yeah. But a lot of people out in the world, they have, maybe they have an Arduino board that they got, and they meant to play with it, and they play with it a little, and then they put it away, for whatever reason. Maybe it's because it was just too hard to use. You know, maybe it was because they didn't have a purpose at the time. Well, now we're already living in the future. Now sensors that are connected that do interesting things like make you cocktails or open your garage door are commonplace. Yeah. A lot of those first generation of makers have gone on to actually create products or to help companies make products because you know, we've been off there on the periphery, on the edges, building some core expertise for a future that is just arriving now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, this does sound like an absolutely wonderful thing. I'm very glad to hear that Go is coming to microcontrollers. And I thank you so much for speaking to me. Well, thank you very much. No problem really whatsoever. appreciate it. You too, mate.